Hey guys, so coming back to this thing here and I've uh, made a decision. I'm not gonna pursue this uh, way of doing this anymore. Um, it's just too labor intensive. You know, I had okay results with it. Actually, I actually don't see what I'm looking at, but I actually had okay results with it and, uh, and all that, but I think that I'm gonna cut this off and I'm not going to worry about this anymore because as, as it sits right now I'm going to have to remake my uh, my die again because it's just getting too beat up so what I've decided I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit easier route and I'm going to just make a straight piece like one of the guys suggested a straight piece and you know roll the, uh, the edge over a piece of one inch bar to give me the contour I want at the distance I want and then I'll just pie cut it, you know, all the way along the length and, and then just weld it together. You know, it'll be a lot quicker than than working with this. You know, Greg had suggested I use some heat, and I think that some heat would certainly help a lot. Um, you know, John had made some suggestions. Everybody was very, very helpful in all their suggestions. But, you know, at this point, I've been working on this one little piece for probably you know i'd have to go back and look at the videos but it's probably you know going over a week now and uh and for something that is going to be hidden under a layer of undercoat i don't think that i, I really it's that important to get that perfectly right so i'm going to just do it like i said and uh and uh, get that in there so that i can you know button up this edge because there's other tough things to work on that are more important you know like a good example would be this stuff right in here you know so get that done get you know button that piece up button the front piece up which will be a similar sort of a situation cut that piece out fix it you know fix it up to here basic well i might as well just fix it all the way up to the top and then i can fix this one in here afterwards because it's fairly well accessible but anyways okay so there's my rig for uh for bending the uh, flange. I already bent a, a 3 8 inch flange that's uh, trapped underneath this piece of uh, quarter inch bar stock here. And uh, I've got a piece of 3 8 inch bar stock here to lift it up to the height that I wanted it at. And, uh, and this is a 1 inch uh, round stock bar here. So what that gives me is it gives me a half inch radius on that curve set uh, up 1 8 of an inch off of the other flange and uh, and uh, I gave myself enough that I should be able to fill in a good part of the top of that stuff there. So now what I'm going to do is take this out of the clamp. Oh yeah, and I rolled this edge over uh, with a block and, and just a big ball peen hammer. And the idea was to chase it all down evenly so that I, I didn't get any you know great ripples that I was going to have to go and hammer and dolly out. There's still a little bit because I did initially start it with the... Uh, with the regular, uh, with my lucky hammer, my lucky auto body hammer there. Anyways, so I'll take this out, and what I'm going to do is, along the curve of this, this is how that sits under the car here. Um, I'll pie cut it, probably at fairly wide intervals along here, and then up to here I'll have to tighten it up a bit. I actually was going to sit down and work out what... Uh, what the numbers are, but actually for this edge it doesn't really matter. Um, I suppose if I pie cut it every half inch it'll be fine, but it's going to probably open up a fair bit on that uh, on that open edge. That might be one of the cases where I will still use this piece that I made here. It might not be a terrible idea because that, although it's not pretty, um, won't have any pie cuts in. That actually is maybe a better idea. You know, I'll use a little bit of what I made yesterday. So anyways, but this piece here, I'll pie cut it at whatever regular interval. I'll fit it against this form, which is the exact shape that I need it to be. You know, more or less, it's a little mashed. Quite nicely polished and mashed there. But, uh, but I'll bend it to conform more or less to that. And I'll bring it up as far here as I figure I need to. And, uh, and go from there. And, uh, and yes, by the way, this piece at this end, this came to pretty much where I needed to terminate it at, but that end did go past where I needed it for. So I did make it bigger than I needed to, but not at both ends. Uh, regardless, um, okay, well, let's make some pie cuts here. I'll, uh, 
I'll start out with uh, with fairly coarse numbers here. I'll I'll uh, try like you know four along this curve here, and then you know maybe another two or three down to here, and we'll see how we go there. Um, I will still assume like I'll leave this piece attached, even though I know it'll be getting cut off if I'm replacing it with this piece, but I'll leave it on there just so I've got it, and just in case. I suppose it's going to get in the way when I'm trying to bend this stuff. Okay, well we'll we'll figure it out. Hey guys, here's try number four of me trying to trying to get my thoughts straight without cows bellowing and cars driving by and dogs barking. Okay, so I'm going to go over my thought process for for pie cutting this piece here to make it conform to this shape that I've got here. Um, now, this the process I'm using going to use for this is the same process I've used for. Um, shaping tubing and angle iron to uh, to round shapes and I'll, I'll show you one example of it that I've got right here and that's my base for my uh, my shrinking stump and you'll see it's a it looks like a round piece of, uh, of angle but what it is it's actually a flat piece of angle that I pie cut or that I slit cut with the chop saw and basically the theory and I don't know if I need to call it a theory because it does work um, is that knowing the outer radius of the circle that you want, or the, sorry, the outer circumference of the, you know, arc you want to draw, or circle in this case, and knowing the inner circumference, um, and knowing the width of your chop saw, in this case, a blade, what you do is you calculate both those uh, distances, and obviously the inner one is going to be smaller in this case, and uh, and what you say is you say okay now I take that number the difference between those two numbers the outer and the inner circumference and my, you know divide that number by the width of your chop saw and it tells you how many cuts you have to make to make it you know bend into that radius now it's not perfect because you know the the blades don't always cut the same width but and nevertheless you know it gives you the sort of same sort of idea and. Uh, that's basically what I'm going to do with this piece here. And so what I did is I took one of my flexible uh, flexible uh, tape measure and I measured the distance from that edge, if I can do this with one hand, that edge there to this line right here. And that came out to 12 and 5 sixteenths of an inch. Then I measured that same distance from this corner here to this point right here that is, you know, as close as I can make it conform to here. And that is 12 inches. You know, I've written it all down here. The difference between those two is 5 sixteenths. The width of my uh, uh, bandsaw blade is 32 thousandths of an inch. And that comes out to 19 and a half cuts or 20 cuts if you round it up. So I want to make 20 cuts along here to make this conform to that radius. Now obviously you want to look at where this, because this is not a, a regular curve, if it was a regular radius you could make it at even intervals and make it look all neat, but with this one there's more curve here than there is, you know, really right in here. This looks pretty flat, you know, like you could probably probably see that it's actually fairly flat, whereas obviously here there's a great deal of, of curve in it, so I would probably want to put most of my pie cuts or my cuts in this area here. I could probably do it fairly regularly and then maybe one or two down at this end because that's where it starts to angle up. Um, now the same works for this end here except it's in the opposite direction whereas this distance here is three inches, this distance here is three and a half inches and uh, that leaves me a difference of half an inch 32 thou for the width of my uh, my uh, bandsaw blade gives me 15.6 or 16 cuts rounded up. So I know that that actually needs a lot of cuts along there. And uh, the difference here is that for this length here, uh, from here to here, I'll cut from this side. And for this length here, I'll cut from this side because it's bending in the opposite direction. The idea being is I could cut it all from the same side but what ends up happening here is I'm not actually closing the cuts, I'm opening the cuts up and that would actually mean that 
I would actually end up having to have to make up almost half an inch of weld with, uh, or, or half an inch of, uh, of metal with weld, you know, and I suppose spread across 15 cuts, it wouldn't be that big a deal, but, but nevertheless. Now, that's an awful lot of cuts for that length, that's an awful lot of pieces to weld up, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little uh, chop saw, or chop saw, my uh, little die grinder blade here, that's a little wider, looks like it's probably about a 50 thou cut on that, and uh, recalculate these numbers and, and do it over again. Okay, so just a quick revision of my calculations here. If I use the die grinder, the blade width is 61 thou, so it leads to like 10.2 cuts, and I think I can round that one down safely. And for this area here, it's actually about 8 cuts, but the reality is, I was probably measuring beyond the point where I should have measured. I should have only measured up to, say, this point, because that's where it started to curve in the other direction. So I might uh, just remeasure everything and do it over again. I'm going to try and do the whole thing with this piece, like I said, you know, like and, and even curve it into here. Um, we'll see how we go. Um, probably makes more sense to start at this end first. And I'm going to try and knock that number down a bit by actually making kind of half, you know, like somewhat wedge-shaped cuts in it. Um, I'll space them evenly along that length and we'll see how we go with that. You know, it's not quite 100% because that is not, it's actually flatter here than it is there. So most of the curve should probably be in there actually. Anyways, I'll figure it out and I'll show you exactly what I mean. Uh, I mentioned the tubing idea and I thought about giving you guys an exact example, but if you guys want, you know, don't quite grasp what I'm talking about, I don't, I don't think it's that big a deal, but but uh, if, you, if you don't quite get it, uh, I can do a separate video and I can actually show you guys an example with uh, you know, cutting a piece of 2x2 uh, two two tubing, let's say, for example, to, let's say, a 6-inch radius or something like that on the inside and, uh, and show you how the calculations work on that one there. I actually set up a spreadsheet at one point to do those calculations for me and it's got it sitting around somewhere. So if somebody was interested in that, I could give that to them as well. It's not very self-explanatory, though. You almost would need the video. Regardless... <laughs> Oh, excuse me. Regardless, um, I'm rambling. It's 7 o'clock. I probably only have about an hour before I want to bolt back inside. So uh, I'll cut this off now. So as far as things go for the calculations I just showed you guys, um, I decided to revise things. I had a good look at the way that this curve was structured and broke it down to here's the first curve part. And there's a flat section, and then there's the part where it kind of reverses in the opposite direction that's kind of flat at the end. Now, theory and practice seldom match <laughs> exactly, but uh, there's the piece, and it comes down like that, you know. Uh, I can't 100% rely on this because this form um, didn't you know, doesn't have that eighth, extra eighth inch there. So this is pretty damn close, I think. Now I had to cut it off here because some brainwave cut the piece of metal without taking into account the fact that we were, you know, pie cutting and all that other fun stuff like that in the length. It really should have been probably about an inch longer than it was. So I ended up cutting it off to the point where I can bring this piece in and I'll just use that or I'll make a whole new piece for that corner, or maybe I'll come back out tomorrow and remake this whole piece. But here's basically uh, how it ended up looking. You know what, I'm thinking about it. And now that I got the idea in place, and it's not that hard to bend this, um, I think I will make it come out tomorrow and make another piece. But it's getting late. You can hear the crickets cricketing. They're telling me it's probably time to put the doggies to bed and and come in myself. So anyways, I might mess around with this a little bit longer, but unless there's something interesting to show you, uh, there's the basic gist of it. Uh, I ended up, I don't want to make 15 cuts along here, so I ended up wide, you know, bending these over and then I'd widen them out a bit more. I think I did it about twice to get that to conform a, a little bit tighter there. So it is essentially a pie cut in that part there. Regardless, um, uh, I think that's it for today, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. 
and I'll see you guys tomorrow. There we go, all ready to go for tomorrow, so I'm gonna knock off. Thanks guys.